How old are you? This question is usually followed by saying something along the lines of I'm 23 years old. But have you ever wondered what aging means? We all know that our bodies change over time. While I was able to sleep in the most uncomfortable positions when I was a child, I now have back pain for several days if I do not lie properly. So everything seems to become worse for our bodies the older we get. But what does aging mean in a biological context? How are cells in old people different from those we find in children? And more importantly, are there ways to delay aging? My name is Kim Steinig and today we talk about aging in a biological context and how we can potentially prolong our lives. The high living standards in our modern society have enabled us humans to become much older than in the past centuries. In Europe, for example, the average life expectancy has increased from about 34 years in 1770 to over 80 years in 2015. Of course, the strong decrease in child mortality is one of the reasons why we see this effect, but we still seem to become older and older. Earlier this year, Kane Tanaka was confirmed to be the oldest living person at age 116. To give you some context, she was born in 1903, the same year the Wright brothers became the first ones to achieve powered flight. So, does she have any secrets for the longevity of her life? Well, according to her, she drinks three cups of coffee a day and loves chocolate. It is debatable if these products have any effects on our lifespans, but we on this channel want scientific evidence. So we first need to define what aging really is. And to be more precise, we will talk about cellular aging today. There is a great review discussing the so-called hallmarks of aging. These are factors which accumulate over time leading to aged cells. As you can see, aging involves several aspects and there is actually a lot of research going on here. Today, however, we will exclusively focus on telomere attrition and stem cell exhaustion as I found fascinating studies just for you. So let's start with telomere attrition. As you all know, our chromosomes are linear, meaning that they have two ends. Telomeres are repetitive DNA sequences, which are found at the ends of each chromosome. In humans, telomeres often comprise over 2,500 repetitions of the sequence TTATTG. And these repetitive sequences have many crucial roles for our cells. For instance, they are forming loops together with many proteins in order to protect our chromosomes from being fused by our own DNA repair mechanisms. You see, sometimes our double-stranded DNA can break due to several reasons, leading to so-called double-strand breaks. In these cases, repair mechanisms can be activated, which then connect to fragments again. And this is great for us normally. However, if our chromosomes were unprotected, DNA repair mechanisms would sense them as double-strand breaks and start to connect our chromosomes. So the formation of loops by telomeres and associated proteins prevent chromosomal fusions. Furthermore, telomeres can, for example, regulate gene expression, but their most prominent feature is that they are the solution to the so-called end replication problem. The end replication problem arises while we copy our DNA upon cell division. Again, our chromosomes comprise two ends. Every time we replicate our DNA, the very end of the chromosome cannot be fully copied resulting in a slow, gradual shortening of the chromosome. You can now imagine what could happen if our chromosomes become shorter and shorter. We would lose more and more genes leading to the formation of cancer or cell death. However, we do not have genes at the end of our chromosomes, but instead we have repetitive telomere sequences. And as a consequence, we only lose telomeres, which is not initially a big issue for us. The older we get, however, the shorter our telomeres can become, and now telomere attrition can occur. There is a certain point at which our cells only comprise a fraction of the original telomer lens. And consequently, these cells stop to divide, meaning they go into cellular senescence. There are many implications of this form of cellular senescence, which we call replicative senescence, such as stem cell exhaustion, which is another hallmark of aging. And here you can see that the hallmarks of aging are all connected together. So let's talk about stem cells. We have already discussed them in this video here, so make sure to check it out. As we know, we find stem cells in different parts of our body, such as the skin, the liver, or the bone marrow. And there are many age-related diseases associated with the inability of stem cells to divide. For instance, if hematopoietic stem cells in our bone marrow are not able to properly divide anymore, 
anemia and impaired immune system are the result. If mesenchymal stem cells are affected, osteoporosis or decreased factor repair can occur. Okay, so now we know the telomere attrition can lead to stem cell arrest, which then on the other hand can lead to age-related diseases. The question is, can we now somehow stop this process? Well, the answer is yes. There is a natural mechanism which can elongate telomeres, and this mechanism is driven by an enzyme called telomerase, and telomerase is highly active in embryonic stem cells. You can compare telomerase to Paul McCartney writing the song Hey Jude. Just as he added na 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 at the end of his song over and over again, telomerase just adds telomere sequences at the end of chromosomes. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of this comparison, I guess, but let's continue. Through telomerase, our cells are able to divide for most parts of our lives. However, most of our cells quickly stop to produce telomerase upon development, which means that our cells eventually will stop to divide. And just as a side note, but cancer cells are often an exception to this rule. They start to reactivate telomerase, thereby enabling their replicative immortality. The question now is if there are ways to decrease the speed at which our telomeres shorten. And now I have two studies for you. The first one was published by Nobel laureate Elizabeth Blackburn, and this is actually a quite prominent publication of hers. So what did her colleagues and she find out exactly? Previous studies had shown that chronic stress leads to poor immune functions and higher risks of developing cardiovascular diseases. This study assumed that chronic stress might even impact us on a cellular level. Chronic stress might shorten our telomeres, thereby accelerating cellular aging. The first group consisted of mothers with chronically ill children, called caregivers. The second group was formed by mothers with healthy children, the control group. It was expected that caregivers are exposed to high levels of stress and therefore might have shorter telomeres. And indeed, it was found that caregivers have 48% less telomerase activities and they also have significantly shorter telomeres compared to the control group. To give you some context, it will take 9 to 17 years for the mother of healthy children to have as short telomeres as the mother of chronically ill children. This is direct evidence for a possible relationship between psychology and cellular aging. And now you might think, well, if there is a negative impact of chronic stress, is there also a positive impact of reducing stress? Another study investigated the effects of lifestyle changes on telomere lengths in prostate cancer patients. Here, prostate cancer patients were divided into two groups, a lifestyle intervention group and a control group. The lifestyle intervention group had to change their habits over a period of five years. They had to have a special diet high in whole foods and low in fat. They walked six times a week for 30 minutes each. They started yoga and relaxation exercises and they formed a social support group, which met once a week. A blood sample was taken from both groups at the beginning of the study and after five years. It was found that the teloma lens in the control group decreased, which is not very surprising. However, the telomere length in the lifestyle intervention group actually increased a bit. And this might now explain why Japan has one of the highest life expectancies in the whole world. The country's traditional food is high in fiber and there is extensive social support for old people. And it might be a coincidence, but also the oldest currently living person in the world is of Japanese descent. This can actually give us some hope that we can slightly decrease the rate at which our telomeres shorten and thereby we can potentially have a longer life. Okay, today we managed to talk about two aspects of aging, but of course there are more. So what do you think? Is this topic interesting for you? If so, let me know in the comment section and I will make more videos about that. Don't forget to subscribe, meaning hitting the button here, and also hit the bell button, which is like this button here, since YouTube now wants you to click on two buttons in order for them to show you my videos. And finally, a small outro. The last weeks have been very busy for me. For example, I had to design a poster for the open day of my faculty. The design isn't perfect, but I included parts of my thumbnail here. Cool, right? No? Okay. And at the open day, there was a small child which asked a lot of questions for over half an hour. But at the end, she said to me that she now wants to become a researcher, so that was very successful. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you again for all of the support. I read all of the comments. I see all of it and I'm very thrilled about this. I really like to engage with you guys and you also have a lot of great questions. So with that, I'll see ya. Thank you.